Hey guys, Pastor Lynn Hansen here in North Park Church, Columbus, Nebraska, sharing with you in our life groups this week. Glad to be doing that. Um, hope you're glad to be a part of a life group. What an opportunity you have to grow in the grace of God through your life groups. We're in the last uh, installation of this Tough Stuff series, a series where we've talked about the hard things, the things that are controversial in society, and, and looked into God's Word and determined what He has to say about those things. And we're finishing up with probably the toughest of the tough subjects, and, and that is choosing a kingdom. Uh, it's, it really is all about, um, all of the tough stuff subjects are, are, are really combined into this uh, one issue as, as the primary issue. We choose a kingdom in life, a, a kingdom to pursue, something to go after. And that creates a great controversy in society, a great divide in terms of, of what kingdom you're chasing. Is it a worldly kingdom? Is it a godly kingdom? And, uh, you know, um, as we do this, as we look into this and we determine what God's Word says about it, I want you to think about Romans 8, 13. And this isn't our, our story verse for the week, but it sets up our story verse, so I, I wanted to share this with you. Romans 8, 13. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit, capital S, God's Spirit, uh, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. We must overcome the world, uh, or we will die separated from God for eternity. Um, it, it really is um, something that happens because of our salvation, and, and God does that in us. We uh, grow in, in Christ uh, to the point of, of overcoming the world. It's not an option. It's not uh, something that we can or we cannot do. We if we put our faith in Christ, it's something that does happen. So, how can we overcome as Jesus did? Well, uh, let's take a look for our story at Luke chapter 22, verses 39 to 46. And uh, again, <clears throat> let me remind you, I'll tell you the story. Listen close, because afterwards somebody will retell the story, and then everyone else add in what they might have missed, and so you're keeping track, you know, and then rebuild that story. This is a great way to get God's Word into your heart. So listen closely. Here's the story. Uh, and he came out and went, as was his custom, we're talking about Jesus here, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being in a, an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Rise and pray that you may not enter into temptation. All right, well, that's your story. Go ahead now. Somebody try to retell that as best you can from memory. Everybody else afterward, add in what they may have missed. Let's get this into our hearts. This is a great story, especially for the season we're in. Uh, so go ahead and... and uh, do your story now, please. All right, well, here's some discussion questions, and, uh, you know, we're going to go back to Romans 8, 13 for just a minute before we go to our story and talk about that. Uh, how is our story related to Romans 8, 13? Remember what he said there, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die, but if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. How is that related to our story here at Luke 22? All right, uh, pray, seek God on that, talk about it together, see how you come out. Well, you know, in our story, much, 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 much has been made. I mean, whole messages have been taught uh, on verse 42. You know, verse 42 there says, uh, you know, this is Jesus saying, Father, if you're willing to remove this cup from me, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Very powerful verse. And so much, much has been made of that. 
But Jesus' struggle doesn't end with those words. If you study the text carefully, uh, his struggle continues, right? Why is that? Why does it keep going on? What's happening there? All right, talk that over, please. Well, let's get a little deeper as we look at question three. Why was Jesus having such a struggle in prayer? Look at, I mean, have you ever prayed like this? He's praying so earnestly that his sweat became like great drops of blood. Wow. I mean, he's really struggling in prayer. Why is he having such a great struggle in prayer? What was the cause? Does the text tell us what the cause is? Talk this over, please. All right, now we're going to take this um, back to our ourselves here and, and what it is that God is doing with you. Okay, question four then, what are some of the worldly, fleshly, things that you know God wants you to begin struggling in prayer to overcome. Clearly, this is the answer. Struggling, struggling, struggling in prayer. What are some things that you know now God wants you to begin struggling in prayer to overcome? Okay, would you share with the group, please? Get back to me for the last question, please. Final question, question five, how are you going to move forward in what God has shown you through this text, through your life group, through the message last weekend? How are you going to move forward with what God has shown you? Remember, uh, putting this to work in your life, letting God work in your life is, is key, it's paramount, not just showing up, but letting God uh, work in your life and being very intentional about that. So how are you going to move forward in what God has shown you? All right, well, that's your life group for this week. Um, really glad that uh, we were able to share together. Really praying for your groups, praying for you. God bless you. We'll see you soon.